Hello, in this video, I am going to show you how to use, you know, web sockets, how to work with them. So this allows you to essentially connect to a server without using HTTP requests, which allows for two-way communication with a server without polling. The implementation isn't that hard to be fair. First of all, you want to go to the pubspec.yaml file. You need to add another dependency. This is going to be web underscore socket underscore channel and the version of the will be 1.0.9 so if we you know get the package and upgrade it as well so if you want to know more information about packages if you just go to pub.dartlang.org forward slash packages and for this one it's web socket underscore channel and the latest version is version 1.0.9 currently but you can you know use whatever latest version there is when you use it or you can use the version that i'm using it and the installation that you know just right here shows you how to actually you know use it and there's different versions as well okay so now that we've got that we can actually do some imports so for the imports you want to have an uh, import for package flutter foundation dart you, you don't need the extra coding pop spec for this one but you'll need it for this one you'll need it for package web socket channel io dot dart and you'll need it for package web socket channel web socket channel dot dart okay so now in the my app, which is the first thing that is run, within the home part of it, we need to um, sort out this. We need to add a channel. So the channel is going to be io web socket channel dot net, and you can obviously link to any web socket you want. I'm going to be using the one from websocket.org, which is going to be the echo, and that will just essentially send back what we send to it. Websocket.org. Okay, so. The name parameter channel will not default. Okay, it's strange. IO WebSocket Channel dot connect. Shouldn't be anything to do with this. So isn't defined. Hmm. Let's make sure it's all in the right place. Channel. If I was to record. Then the stainless widget. Okay, I'm just going to continue just in case it's an error that will disappear. I'm sure it will very shortly. Okay, so in our stateful widget, what we need to do is create a socket. So, web socket channel, and I'm going to call this channel. And next, what we need to do is specify that another parameter, and this is you know required, so we're going to put required. And it's going to be this dot channel. There we go. Okay, that error has now disappeared. Fantastic. Now we can go to the actual state itself. And um, first of all, we need to create a variable. This one is going to be text editing controller. And we're just going to be using this to display the, you know, the response that we get. So we put text editing controller and some code. Okay, so now in the body, what we are going to do is we are going to have a, what are we going to do? You know what? We'll get rid of this. Again, this is just. You know, I'm going to format in a certain way. I've got some code already here. So padding 
and obviously you can do this however you want but the panel I'm going to use is edge in sets dot all and the value will put 20.0 again this is all just just to customize it this is an absolutely necessary child is going to be a column inside here we're going to have a cross axis alignment which is going to be cross axis alignment dot start we're going to have children widget form child text form field controller underscore controller and now we're going to just put some decoration and it's going to say input decoration so this text form field will just get the input from us and we'll send this and it, the website will literally just send you back to send message now what we are going to do outside of the form we are going to have a stream builder and the stream is going to be equal to widget dot channel dot stream builder context now shot and we are going to return padding and for this we can put padding const again if you are you know a bit unsure about everything that's going on you know the extra stuff we got in padding column feel free to check out my video that i cover all of this cool stuff so symmetric and for vertical 20.0 now we are going to put child text snapshot dot has data and we're going to put dollar snapshot dot data and now what we are going to do is create a floating button and the floating button is what we are going to press to actually send the actually now we don't even need a floating button we'll just create a regular button now we'll just say i love the raise button so raise button so the child is going to be text and i'm going to say send then i'm going to say on press so when it is pressed it will Actually, you can. It's just going to be another method, another separate method. And say underscore send message. This hasn't been implemented yet, and we are going to implement that right now. So we are going to say void underscore send message, and we are just going to check if the controller, you know, if the text is an empty. So if controller dot text dot text dot is not empty if it's not empty then we are actually going to send it so we say widget dot channel dot think dot add underscore controller dot text uh, yeah let's just this Make sure we handle the cleaner probably so we're gonna override the dispose method and in here we're gonna say widget dot channel dot sync dot close and we can say super dot dispose as well okay so we should actually be all ready to you know reload it so if we reload it we get this so if i type in here Hello, click send. I don't see that's appeared right here. So, nowhere are we overwriting this directly. This is being sent to this WebSocket, and that is what we are putting inside of the controller. So, that's it for WebSockets. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. I will link the official documentation for WebSockets 
and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.